Hi everyone, welcome. So for all of you who are new to Latinas in Tech, um, let me tell you just a brief update on um, what we do. So we're a nonprofit organization with the aim to connect, support, and empower Latina women working in tech. We work hand in hand with top technology companies to create safe spaces for professional development, recruitment, and mentorship. Um, so we encourage you to sign up to be part of the Latinas in Tech tech community, where you'll be able to connect with over 9,000 Latinas in 11 chapter cities. And I'll show you how to connect later in the webinar. But now I want to introduce to you our amazing panelist, Janet Cruz Padron. Um, she's the founder of Latina Money, a financial empowerment platform designed to ignite and fuel wealth creation for the modern Latina. So by fusing media, technology, and storytelling, Latina Money is empowering modern women to lift the taboo and harness the tremendous power of money in order to write and rewrite cultural narratives. As the host and voice behind the Latina Money podcast, Janet now talks money and wealth with successful entrepreneurs, creatives, and industry elites to share exclusive insider tips, wisdom, and actionable tips all modern women can use to build wealth and create smart and savvy income. So now I will let her walk you through her story, which is fascinating, and tell you about tricks that have worked for her in learning how to cultivate financial self-love. Go for it, Janet. Awesome. Hola, mujeres. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, are you guys able to hear, to hear me okay? Is the volume all right? Yes? Cool. So now I'll stop sharing my screen so that we can start sharing this. Can you hear me? Is the volume okay? Can you hear me? No? Hello? Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody put in the chat, yes. Oh, yes, please. Drop a yes if you can hear me. Perfect, perfect. Hola, mujeres. Thank you so, so, so much for joining us tonight with so much that's going on in the world right now. It's super duper important that we connect and reconnect with ourselves in mind, body, spirit, and bank accounts to make sure that we're as ready as we possibly can to hit that ground running once quarantine is lifted. That next chapter of your life is coming sooner than you think. And using this time right now to really take an honest look, an honest inventory of your life is going to help you get on that fast track towards creating and ultimately living your best financial life in that next chapter. And of course, one of the requirements to live your best financial life is to get right with your money, which we'll learn how to do tonight with three of my best tips that can serve as a little sana, sana, colita de rana for your dinero, because as we all know, during these challenging times, so many things have changed around us that have really left a lot of bumps and bruises for our pocketbook. If you're able to stay with me until the end, I will be telling you girls um, where you can find organizations that are always giving away money. And I know we could always uh, definitely use free money, right? Um, there are a few slides that I'd love to share with you girls, so let me do that. Uh, 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 um, let's see, how do I do this? What is my screen here? Share screen. There we go. Alrighty. So my hope is that by spending this time together chit-chatting about money, we can all get even more comfortable speaking the NATO on a regular basis because talking money is the first step to not only creating positive change for ourselves, but also creating positive change for the entire collective. When we as women and as Latinas give ourselves permission to break through the taboo and talk about what money does to us, and what money does for us, what we're really doing is harnessing the power of, that money has and using that, to, that power to write and rewrite not only our own individual stories, but also our cultural narratives as a whole. Currently, the narrative is that Latinas are the lowest paid 
of all women. And I'm talking, we're the bottom of the totem pole. As women, especially Latinas, our financial lives really take a beating. We tend to have a higher, higher demands on our money, often having less of it to begin with. Um, now I want to stop sharing my screen for a second to do a little giveaway. Let's see how I can do it. Can I oh, escape? There we go. Uh, come back to me. I'll stop share here. Um, can you guys see me okay here? Drop a yes. Perfect. Um, I have a few of these Dinero workbooks that I'd like to give away during our workshop. Um, they'll be super duper handy for actually taking the steps that we'll be talking about today after the workshop is over. So for my first giveaway, can any of you girls tell me what month um, we honored Equal Pay Day this year? Anybody, any guesses? Ah, I saw a March. Yep. Who said March? Perfect, Nancy, Nancy. Nancy, make sure that you, um, well, you can either send Andrea your email address or you can email me directly to Janet at latinamoney.com and I'll make sure to pop this in the mail for you. March is exactly right. Now, let me go back to my handy dandy slides. Share screen. So March 31st of this year, which was not too long ago, the U.S. observed Equal Pay Day, which was a day that was dedicated, dedicated to raising awareness of the gender pay gap. Um, in the United States, this date represents how far into the year the average woman must work in order to earn what the average man earned the previous year regardless, and I really stress the word regardless of experience or job type. So what that really means is that women as a collective had to work until the end of March, uh, three additional months, almost four, to earn what the average man earned in 2019. And that's crazy, right? But what's even crazier is that right here next to that um, equal pay day stat, is that uh, Latinas will have to work even harder and longer than that. This year, Latina Equal Pay Day will be observed at the end of October, meaning Latinas like ourselves, como nosotras, will have to work an additional 10 months, almost 11, into 2020, just to earn what the average man earned in 2019, last year. Now, with those ridiculously crazy facts and figures. Um, the need for women, you know, nosotras again, como Latinas, um, to learn, the need for us to learn and speak money is even more critical. The less money that we make, the less money that we have for our families, for our businesses, for our communities, and because our financial lives take that kind of a beating, it's even more important that you yourself make the conscious commitment to infuse your financial life with a whole lot of self-love by adopting the practices that will support you in getting to a place in your financial life where you are not only surviving, but you're also thriving, which is what financial self-love is all about. Um, we are worth you know, living our best financial lives even during times of crisis. Because let's be real, life will in many ways, shapes, and forms, not just, the, you know, through this COVID pandemic, serve us tons of crises, whether they be personal crisis, relationship crisis, family crisis, career crisis, and so on and so on. But the faster that we embrace the, the time, um, you know, this time of crisis to really you know, see it as a massive opportunity, the better able, we're able to bounce back even higher after that metaphorical fall. But that's easier said than done, right? I know it, but the great news is that in order to come back even bigger and better and better, all you have to really do is two things. So let's find out what those two things are. 
unlearning the bad and learning the good. If something that wasn't working in your life, if, whether it be in your life or in your money, now or in the past, it just simply means that you are being called to refocus, repivot, and restructure a few things. My biggest advice to you all, whether it's in life and or in money, is that if something isn't working, you have to let it go and be willing to learn, to unlearn your attachment to it and learn, you know, unlearn the, the dependency on it, the attachment on it. And because it took you to a place that you didn't really want to be in, um, whether it's a person, a place or a thing, and instead learn the new th um, the new things that are really going to get you to where you want to be, whether that's learning the people, places, and things again to get you where you actually, um, again, want to be at. But when it comes to your money, the same principles apply. Unlearn the bad stuff that keeps your finanzas stuck or estancada and learn the good stuff that helps you cultivate a healthier relationship with your money which is what will more easily and effortlessly propel you forward. So what are these financial self-love practices that can help you cultivate a healthier relationship, a healthier and more proactive relationship with your dinero? Let's dive in and find out. So for financial self-love tip number one, look at where you've been. This step will require you to go back to the scene of the financial crimes in your life and ask yourself, hey lady, what's your problem? Meaning it will require you to go back and consciously and truthfully, and the keywords truthfully, look at where you might have been sabotaging your own financial life. Now, when it comes to money problems, more often than not, we suffer from one of two problems, sometimes both at the same time, a spending problem or an earning problem. And deciphering whether you have a spending problem or an earning problem is how you can begin to discover where exactly the money problems are coming from that could be hijacking your particular financial life. So let's say you have a spending problem. A tactic that worked for me was to tell my money where to go by having multiple bank accounts for different purposes and automating the deposits and the withdrawals to and from those accounts. So for example, as you can see on this slide here, um, if you, let's say, you know, I got a paycheck here. Um, a portion of it would go into a retirement account, which could be anything from a 401k and, or an IRA or any sort of equivalent pre-tax account. Um, this occur occurs simultaneously, the retirement, and then it goes to a checking account. So here, everything is really ideally done through direct deposit. So the key is to automate, 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 into the accounts of your choice, which is um, really, you know, the automation part is the, por the part where you tell your money what to do. So for, in my example, I had, these were four of the main accounts that I had. A guilt-free fund, which was an account that could be used to fund a dream vacation for my business, uh, you know, to start a business. Um, and it can be set up in any sort of um, check normal checkings account. This one was particularly um, important for me because I struggled with really sticking to a budget because it felt um, that very restraining, very constricting, very self-sacrificing. So I always found myself kind of defaulting and breaking my budget, but it helped me to actually open an entirely different account, um, deposit money in there, and that was my, you know, my play money. So essentially whatever was in there I could have the luxury of being able to treat myself without the guilt that my, you know, that I didn't have an emergency fund that I did, you know, that I, it was money that I could possibly be using somewhere else. Not really because, you know, my accounts on, for my emergency and for my debt and um, for my bills were already allocated. So, you know, jumping to account number two, the emergency fund, which is super important, especially in times like this, 
This account can be used for unexpected medical bills, car repairs, et cetera, or when you're in that transition period between jobs. Um, as my Caribbean friends like to say, obligado fun, which is my bills. Um, these are the non-negotiables. These are the things that you absolutely have to pay every single month. Um, of course, when I would kind of crunch my numbers, that one had the big, that's where I would start. I would start making, doing my numbers there seeing what was left over of my paycheck and then allocating to all the other funds. And last but definitely not least was my liberation fund, um, as I like to call it. And it's an account that is used for debt repayment. So now let's go over to the flip side of the struggle and talk about how to solve an earning problem. As we heard in the statistics presented a little earlier on, Latinas are the lowest paid demographic in the United States which means that as long as we continue under earning, we will have to continue playing catch up when it comes to our money. And one of the largest factors that keeps so many, oh, let's see if I can go to this next one. Um, you know, one of the factors that keeps so many people living paycheck to paycheck is that the inflation rate goes up in average two to 3% every year, yet our wages continue to remain stagnant. Generally speaking, inflation is the rate at which the cost of living goes up every year, and that's not including um, healthcare costs if that comes out of your pocket as well. So things get two to three percent more expensive every year, but more often than not, our wages are not going up at the same rate. Um, now, the last time I checked, the federal minimum wage was set at $7.25 per hour, and that has not increased since July 20, 2009. So when you're trying to do the calculations using those numbers, it doesn't take long to see that the math just doesn't add up to the reality of the demands to our dollars. Now, while these type of issues are deeply rooted systemic issues that must be rectified through advocacy and reform, there are certain things that we could do in the here and now that, um, we, that can combat the effects of inflation in our own lives, such as asking for that raise at work, negotiating your salary before starting a new job, and of course, number three is giving yourself a raise by creating multiple streams of income for yourself. And overcoming a under-earning problem is especially important because this is really key for us as women and as Latinas to ensure that the paychecks we do receive are enough for us to survive as well as thrive. Now, realistically, the need to give yourself a raise by creating multiple streams of income has now become more of a necessity than a luxury. Um, as, uh, you know, as we are experiencing right now with furloughs and layoffs, putting all your income uh, generating uh, techniques in one basket is extremely dangerous thing to do. Um, look at the quarantine time as a blessing um, to be able to really think outside of the box, um, then recalibrate to give yourself as many options as you possibly can to generate income. So to recap, the trick to step number one is to bravely go back to the scene of the financial crimes and decide whether you have a spending problem or whether you have an earning problem. And then take the appropriate steps to start changing that so you won't be sabotaging your financial life. Now I wanted to uh, do another little giveaway. So I will stop sharing my screen for a minute. Hey. Um, so giveaway time, girls. Woo Who can tell me what are two of the most common problems when it comes to money? Oh, yeah. Spending money and earning money. Andrea, can you help me that those those are going a little quick on my screen so i can't quite pick a winner but if you could pick one um one of the two problems when it comes to our money is spending a spending problem or an earning problem so if 
you wrote that in the chat. Andrea, could you pick one for me, please? And um, either you can get her email address or you can email me directly at Janet at latinomoney.com so I could get your preferred mailing address and get that over to you. So let's dive right in by sharing my screen once again. Family. <laughs> Somebody said family. <laughs> Jocelyn Gutierrez said spending and not saving. A lot of people um, mentioned budgeting. Yes, it's essentially the same thing. Yeah, budgeting and spending. So let me share my screen once again. So for financial self-love tip number two, where am I? There we go. Let me move my screen here. Uh, so financial self-tip number two, looking at where you're at. Um, part of getting right with your money is knowing where the heck all your money is. And that is actually going to take a little bit of time and patience in order to take full stock of where your money is currently at. So for example, here, when it comes to credit cards, uh, what is the balance, the due date, and available credit on each one of your credit cards? Um, when it comes to your assets and your investments, what are your real estate property, stocks, retirement, other investment accounts worth? And lastly, the bank accounts. How much available cash do you have in each of your bank accounts? Um, and a really, really important thing here is to make sure that you're writing all of that information down in one place where you can see the overall picture. I'm super old school when it comes to this. So when I keep records, I do it in my own linear workbook, which has sections for debt, savings, and investments. Um, the trick here in step number two is to have all your numbers laid out so you know exactly what you owe and what you have available. So you can see exactly what you have to tackle and also be able to spot any places or accounts you could potentially tap into if you should ever really need to um, have the need, especially during these challenging times. So now for my last and final tip. Number three, look at where you're going. You gotta watch where you're going, lady. I know sometimes we can get so chaotic that we're frantically running around trying to get our stuff done that we wouldn't even notice a troll standing in a corner of the street waving a million bucks at us. But you have to slow your roll long enough to know that, um, you know, to, to really know where it is that you're going with your money. Because if you don't know where you're going, then how will you ever know when you get there? You don't, the last thing that you want to do is, you know, sort of get on that hamster wheel where you just keep earning money, spending money, earning money, spending money, and then get stuck in that cycle. So when it comes to your money, it really isn't enough to just say that you want more money. You have to know exactly how much is more money. You have to get clear and specific on how much money is necessary to live the life that you uh, need to live, aka survive, um, and how much is necessary to live the life that you want aka the life that will allow you to thrive. So for step number three, you have to get, um, you'll want to get clear on where it is that you want to go and how much money it's going to take to get you there. That way you have a solid number in mind or at least a close ballpark figure so you can then work backwards. So let's say, um, let's see, so let's say, um, you need something like $2,500, $2,500 a month to be able to pay your bills to survive, but you need $5,000 a month to live your best life. So from there, you can kind of go back and ask, okay, where can I make $2,500 a month? And where can I make an additional $2,500 a month for a total of $5,000 a month to live my best life? My, you know, you can then start looking at what options you have available that can make that happen for you. The money is out there. Let me tell you guys and really emphasize that the money is out there. You just have to connect to it. When you're able to get 
clear about how much you need to survive and how much you need to thrive, you can cut down a lot of financial anxiety and start thinking a little bit more rationally about your financial circumstances. So now that we've gone over three tips for cultivating financial self-love for my last giveaway, who can tell me what the three steps are? Let's see if I can stop sharing my screen here. Yes, where you have been. Ooh, I love it. You guys are on it. Yes, 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 yes. Andrea, can you help me? The names are zooming by me. Can you help me also pick a, a third winner for this? Yes, <laughs> the three was awesome, so I'm going to get another one because you won the last one. Yes, look at where you've been, number one. Number two, look at where you're at. And number three, look at where you're going. Okay, looks like Yvonne Armenta. Yvonne, please email me or make sure Andrea gets your email address. Again, Janet at LatinaMoney.com. So let me hop over and share my screen once again. Janet, I also want to encourage all the attendees, if they want to ask you direct questions to you, to post their questions on the Q&A little link, because otherwise the questions keep just scrolling up and won't be able to, you, for you to go back and respond or answer, I mean, those questions. So I, I will encourage everybody to go on the Q&A link to, to post questions for you. Yes, please. We will get to questions very shortly as we wrap up here. So truly, 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 um, let's make sure I'm on a good screen. Consider, truly consider dedicating the time to each of these three steps. Look at where you've been with your dinero, look at where you're, uh, where you're currently at with your dinero, and look at where you're going with your dinero. Um, and lastly, you know, because I, I just wanted to share this. Yes, it's there, okay. Um, because I promise, promise, promise that when you do the work, it, you're, will absolutely get and feel more in control of your financial life, which is the ultimate act of self love. Financial stress is one of the leading causes of death, whether it's suicide or slowly wasting away because you're always under constant stress about money. Don't do this to yourselves anymore, mujeres. Please, please, please make the commitment to choosing yourself and working on truly loving yourself enough to not sabotage your own survival and your own future success by accepting less than what you are worth or by sleeping on your finances or sabotaging your own survival and success by accepting, you know, to just look the other way or sweeping stuff under the rug when it comes to your money. Um, in life and in money, someone who truly loves themselves doesn't sabotage their chances at survival and success. When you truly love yourself, your financial life will reflect that and it will bring you a sense of fulfillment and confidence in your capacity to truly craft a life of your own choosing instead of having to settle for a life that you're just forced to accept. Um, let's also add to that the fact that when you get and feel more in control of your financial life, tú puedes hacer y deshacer como quieras. And that in itself is worth its weight in gold. So with that, I want to thank you girls so much for being here with me this evening. And I hope it won't be the last time we get to connect. Uh, let's see, if you'd like to keep the money conversation going, you can find all the ways in which we, in which we can connect through the Latina Money website at latinamoney, www.latinamoney.com. Don't forget to be part of our thriving community over on Instagram and also tune into Latina Money podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio to hear the money stories of some incredible, incredible, incredible Latina creatives and entrepreneurs. And of course, there's also 
options to work with me directly if you find that you could benefit from some vignetto coaching after this workshop. Above all, I want to leave you all with a reminder to embrace this lockdown as a chance to love and care for yourself, rest, rejuvenate, read, and prep for your harvest season because it's coming. And as much as you know, as much as you possibly can, you know, tr so you can hit the ground running once this is all over. Remember, some of the greatest fortunes were created out of times of crisis, and you and your life are no different. Your new life is waiting on the other side of quarantine. So, you know, you're important, you matter. Please, please do the work. Um, and please, 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 choose above anything, choose yourself and commit to self love by giving yourself what your body, what your brain, what your soul, and what your bank account need to be able to endure this marathon that we call life. So thank you so much, girls. And as promised, um, here is a phenomenal resource by someone that I myself consider a money mentor, um, Nelly Galan, the Adelante Movement um, at theadelantemovement.com. Um, on this site, you can find organizations that give away grants as well as links to hidden money that not a lot of people know of. I also want to leave you with a quote, what, one of my favorite quotes by Queen Bey herself. I don't like to gamble, but if it's one thing I'm willing to bet on is myself. No one will value you or invest in you more than you value and invest in yourself. And remember that there is a great opportunity in all loss. So please explore the site as much as you can, because I am confident that you will find something here that can help you bounce back bigger, better, and better at the end of these times of crisis. So girls, how are we doing on time? Are we able to get to the questions? Yeah, I think that would be great. Uh, let's get to the questions. Do you want me to help you and read them to you? Because uh, some of them are repeated. So I want to make sure that we get to all of them. We have around 30. Okay. No, I sh okay. Nope. I, I can start at the top. I see it says open Q&A. Okay. It says, how have you been able to create multiple streams of income? Do you have any suggestions on where to start? Yes, absolutely. For the Latina Money platform, um, we have um, apparel uh, available. So the really great thing, uh, originally I was doing my own printing and um, selling it where I would ship myself. And of course, when you're a one uh, woman show that can get um, a little tricky there. So what I found out was that Amazon has, it's something, a program called Amazon Merch. Um, you do have to apply for it. So they do have to accept you into the program. But what it is, is essentially you upload your designs um, and it's on demand printing. So say somebody were to purchase it through your website or through, um, you know, some sort of platform, um, Amazon will get the order and then we'll fulfill it usually, you know, with prime delivery. So that's one of the income streams. Another is um, doing workshops, webinars. Um, so I myself am a speaker as well. So that's another um, income stream. Uh, and one of the really important things that um, I want to emphasize here is that there's actually seven, um, primary seven, of course, there's tons of ways to make money, but there's really a core of seven income streams that you can choose from. Um, so if I actually have a blog post that I can um, post because it's very detailed and it can get a little complicated. So if you guys please, please stay connected to the Instagram um, I can post the list of the seven income streams. So please stay connected there. You'll also get a, um, the web or the link where you can link onto my blog post and then read all about it. So um, that is, uh, you'll get more information there. How do you estimate your emergency fund? Ideally, everyone sort of shoots for three to six months, um, preferably a year of an emergency fund. Now I know that can get pretty um, unrealistic considering we have, again, so much, um, so many demands on our money and we're constantly playing catch up. So what I would say is, um, you know, if you could have 
at least a month of what you earn at your job, preferably three months. Um, but uh, of course, it's always personal. I would say however you, however long you think it will a transition would take you. So say for instance, now if you were laid off, ideally, uh, well, you know, ideally it's kind of relative, but how long do you think it would take you to transition where your bills are still getting paid, where you can have, you know, things for survive, money for survival, for food and all the essentials to, until you're able to land your next job. I would say that's, you know, a starting point for an emergency fund, but ideally um, experts do recommend you have three to six months emergency fund when you're um, in best case scenario. Let's see, uh, is there any downside to op opening multiple checking accounts? Yes, and that's a very important question. Thank you for asking that. Um, many of them have, um, say a lot of corporate commercial banks will charge you um, monthly fees, something like, um, it could be up to $12 if you don't have other accounts linked to them. Um, I like to go with online banks, which um, they don't tend to you know, charge you those fees because they're not brick and mortar banks. So there's plenty, plenty um, out there. I myself have an account um, at Marcus.com, which is, I believe is Marcus by Goldman Sachs um, and Wealthfront. I keep some of my money there as well, which they're online platforms, but there's plenty, plenty to choose from. So same thing here. I'm always posting on my social media and Instagram, different possibilities of um, accounts that I come across. So please do stay connected there so to learn more uh, products that might be able to help you out there. So let's culturally Latinas take on the burden of taking care of parents in their sick retirement phase that haven't been good staying for time. Uh, yes, that is actually the reason that can, one of the biggest reasons that contributes to the, the wealth gap, the Latina wealth gap, is that we take more time out to either, you know, give birth, to have children, to take care of child rearing and um, relatives. There is, um, there is actually state funded programs that will pay you um, for taking care of family members. I don't have any of those links off the top of my head, but if you could, or let, please email me. I do have them um, in my files so I can send them your way. But there is um, state help that you, know, will, you can receive financing for helping out family members. Um, you do have to qualify, of course, which I don't know their qualifications. Again, uh, their requirements right off the top of my head. But if you email me, we'll make sure to connect you with that. What is the best way to start investing? If we don't want to be active day trading, how do we research on a money manager? Um, one of the great platforms that I, I have incorporated into my whole portfolio is Elvest, Elvest.com, I believe. Um, they will invest the money for you. So when it also works as a uh, retirement fund, so there is no limit. There's no minimums to start, which they're also a female run, um, female funded, female uh, founded company. Um, and it's a digital platform. So their uh, fees are very, very minimal, which is less than you'll get charged at any other um, platform that I've seen so far. And of course, you know, they're about women empowerment. So I, I'm a big believer in that service. Um, they will, again, uh, invest your money for you. So it's a matter of making an initial deposit and then ideally doing a monthly deposit, whatever it is that you can afford, even if it's $10. And you'll start seeing some of that, um, you know, really growing for you. And it's a, it's a direct result of them investing that money for you. Um, another platform that I really like if you're going to invest um, a larger amounts of money and you really want to see more of those returns is Ameritrade, but there you do kind of have to play around with, um, you know, kind of know what you're doing in terms of reading about certain stocks and going in there, putting in their, their uh, little code and then, you know, buying the stock itself and then selling it. So it's a, it is a little bit more of a hands-on platform, but with Elvis, I think that that's a wonderful place to start. Let's see, do you recommend having a savings account on top of the 401? in essence, doubling savings? Yes, absolutely, um, Arlette, because um, your 401k or your IRA ideally is for your retirement, which is much a much long-term um, projection, whereas your savings, the main purpose of that is to have, you know, to have it be accessible for you in times of 
again, kind of like this, where you have a little bit of a crisis or where you're going through periods of transition. So you absolutely want to have that savings in a place where you can, um, where there is some sort of buffer in terms of withdrawing it. So let's say it's not exactly at a Bank of America where you could just go with your ATM and would, you know, snag it up. But it's, it's nice to have it maybe an online bank. Um, I myself have my savings in Marcus um, and a credit union. So it's really up to your preference, but you know, having um, a place where you can withdraw the money maybe within a day or two or three at the most, I think it's really important to have that accessible. Whereas I think 401ks, you have to go through um, those particular companies and then they might, you might get penalized under normal circumstances. Let's see, Fanny, do you suggest asking for a raise even when your company is struggling financially? Well, ultimately, um, you know, when you're employed with a company, you should have, um, you should want to cultivate a win-win um, situation there. So I would say probably not the best idea to ask them if they're financially struggling, but here is an opportunity also to kind of negotiate your work-life balance. So say if there's instances where you yourself could benefit from working remotely, I would say um, it's a really great idea to maybe negotiate, you know, a day or two here, which ultimately could kind of save you um, on the financial front. So let's say um, you spend on gas or you, say, or you spend on um, other, you know, lunch or things like that. It could kind of end up balancing out. So I think it, it's really important to maybe um, not always keep your dollar, you know, your eye on the dollar sign in terms of um, your pay, but then see also how you can work that um, work-life balance to also maybe compensate for that. Um, Elsa, do you invest in the stock market? If so, where would you suggest a beginner start to learn how to do it to make it work for you as an additional revenue stream? Um, yes, great question. I do. Um, I actually have an Ameritrade account which I myself um, initially had put in $500. This was about 10 years back and bought Apple stock. So now I'm, you know, been sitting on that for 10 plus years, which has gone up significantly. Um, but like I mentioned a little bit earlier with Ameritrade, um, what I do is I, you know, read magazines or I read the newspaper or I go online and look for companies or stocks specifically, you know, what experts are sort of, you know, keeping their eye on. And then what I do is kind of go back to the Ameritrade platform, which I have it on my mobile app, then look up um, the three, the code that they have, you know, for the company and see how much each stock is. And if I can afford that, then I'll buy, you know, one share or two, depending on what I, what I have in my little pot there. Um, so I do actively invest that way. But, um, you know, one of my blog posts on latinamoney.com is how to make the, how to make investing less intimidating. Um, in that one, my suggestion was to go to um, mobile apps like Acorn that um, will let you start investing your spare change. So as little as like a dollar, five dollars, you can kind of start playing around there without putting too much on the line. So let's see, how do you evaluate if a job offer is fair? Can you please share some trusted sources to check? Yes, um, salary. I believe it's salary.com um, that you can do the comparison and actually they will send you emails periodically um, sort of telling you, hey, this you haven't checked your salary in X amount of months. So they will keep up with whatever it is, um, with whatever position you put on there as your, it's free also. So salary.com, I believe. Let's see. Alejandra, with the bear running rampart in the stock market, should I stop contributing to my 401k? Um, great, great, important question. A lot of um, people's 401ks um, and IRAs have been taking a hit because the stock market has gone down. Um, this is sort of um, what works for you because, um, you know, where you are financially because as you know, whatever goes down does eventually have to go back up at some point. Um, I know a lot of people have been cashing out their 401ks and their IRAs during these times. 
as money, you know, they need money for survival, which um, due to the CARES Act has some um, special circumstances now where you don't get penalized and you have up to three years to be able to replace that money. So a lot of people are turning there to withdraw that money. Um, you know, a lot of the big wigs um, really do believe that when it comes to bear markets and the stock market, it's actually a great opportunity to invest in it and to buy stocks that maybe are not, you know, they're cheap now because the, the market is not doing so hot, but you know, you could sit on them and eventually they will go up. And that's exactly what happened to me. Um, but this was over 10 years ago when I decided to invest in Apple and I sat on it for a long time. And it wasn't until recently, you know, that they really exploded that I was able to see, um, you know, the benefits of that investment, but still worth it. Will you send out the slides after the webinar? Um, I hadn't planned on it, but if you email me, I can definitely get you over a PDF. Let's see, Alexis and Tell Your Money Where to Go, do you recommend saving those accounts across different institutions? Oh, where'd you go? I've earned, I've earned go to at least, I'm sure. Yes, um, to me, you know, dive, diversifying your money in different pots as much as you possibly can. Well, not as much, but, um, you know, in, in sort of, um, you know, really be conscious of, of where it is that you open your accounts, I think is important. There is corporate banks and versus um, local banks, which tend to be a lot of the credit unions, and then also online banks. So I preferably like to have um, accounts across each three because, you know, you never know. I'm a big, 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 big believer in technology, but, you know, also anything can happen. So if you just put all your money in uh, online banking, you are not a thousand percent sure in a loan. Nothing is a thousand percent guaranteed um, that you'll have access to that money, but it's always um, for peace of mind to know that you have, you know, some money accessible there in case anything were to happen. But then also, you know, there is a reason why corporate banks um, have withstood the, t you know, the test of time. So, you know, a lot of the bigger banks like Bank of America and Chase um, are always, you know, across the nation. So whether you travel or not, you'll have access to those ATMs. I, you know, it's always nice to have an account there. And then um, credit unions, of course, also are a great option because not only are they local banks, so they don't have a lot of those crazy fees that corporate banks have to deal with, but they also um, are really invested in the community. So they tend to really give back to the communities where they're found. So let's see. So yes, I do recommend having accounts across different institutions. Uh, Let's see, is the average man inclusive of all ethnicities? Um, depends on the statistics, Arlette, uh, depends on the statistics that you look at, but I believe that primarily it is um, with the white uh, Caucasian American man in mind. Leonor, can you provide your contact info again? I missed it. Yes, um, it's Janet, J-A-N-E-T, at latinamoney.com. Yep, it's there. Um, Caroline, how do I figure out which debt to pay off first? One of the greatest things that I always tell my girls in terms of debt is to not put so much pressure on paying everything down to zero. Because at least when it comes down to credit cards, you know, we all have that pressure where we look at those numbers and we say, oh my gosh, you know, I'm this much in debt and I just want to pay it down to zero and be debt free, which could actually hurt you because then there's nothing to report. Um, you know, there's really not a lot of activity happening when they report to your credit. So what the trick is with credit, at least with credit cards, um, is that um, you'll want to pay down each card at least um, a debt. A ratio to a ratio of 29%. Um, so that kind of alleviates a little bit of the pressure of just kind of um, trying to get everything down to zero. But if you can kind of start paying down on um, through your credit cards to get it underneath the 29%, it will actually report to the credit bureaus and look and help you raise your score. Um, I would probably say um, in terms of prioritizing which cards you wanted to pay down, 
um, definitely the one with the highest APR, which is the one which makes your minimum payment go up the highest. So I would say kind of tackle those first. Uh, let's see, let's see. Okay. My goodness. They're, they're popping up as, as I look at them. Could you give <laughs> anonymous? Could you give a panel on just investing? I could. I could. I'll, uh, if stay connected, please to either the newsletter or our Instagram, and, and I'll make sure to announce that if when I'm able to. Please. And I think the top question that we have that there's a lot of interest is: Do you have any yeah. guidance, guidelines that you recommend for spending in terms of percentages? For example, this percentage of your income should be going to rent or mortgage, or this percentage for fun, or this percentage into emergency. Um, yes, um, when it comes to percent allocating money on different accounts, I would say I, I think I mentioned during the, the presentation that. For me, my top, my biggest priority was writing down exactly what my non-negotiable uh, expenses were every month, which was the rent, um, my car insurance, my car payment, all you know, cell phone bill, all of those essentials, and then doing the math on that one and seeing what the big, you know, what the total number is, and kind of letting myself and everything else be guided by that number, you know, unless you really want to make lifestyle changes where, you know, you kind of want to downsize on certain things or, you know, which kind of ends up going into the budgeting. But for when you're first starting out, that's how I did it, which was just listing all my expenses, seeing what that number was, and then seeing what I had coming in in terms of my paycheck or my income streams and say, okay, I have, you know, minimum, let's say, like, you know, my example, 2,500, I needed the 2,500 to pay for my essentials. So then that gets chopped off of my, in, you know, whatever income I have coming in. Then when you have that, the number, the leftover, essentially, um, what you want to do, um, a lot of people really, um, you know, recommend like 20% of, of that um, to go into those other different accounts. But I would say, I mean, it's a really individual choice because if you want to have a little bit more, um, you know, in your savings, because that's your top priority, then I would say a lot of it, you know, a larger percentage is going to go there. If you're really prioritizing, um, you know, like a debt repayment, I would say, a, you know, higher percentage than 20% would probably go there. But, um, you know, maybe 20%, I think is kind of the magical number across the rest of your accounts, um, not including the, the expenses and the bills. Let's see. And go a little bit to the bottom. Can you repeat the investment platforms? Yes, yeah, so a couple um, that I mentioned was Elvest, E L L E V E S T dot com, Elvest. Um, and um, for the online savings or CD accounts that I also have is Marcus.com and Wealthfront. Um, so it's W E A L T H F R O N T dot com, Wealthfront. And those will give you, um, Wealthfront and um, Marcus will give you interest on whatever money you deposit there. Let's see. Cool. Do you recommend to only invest after paying off debt or is it okay to pay down the card little by little and also invest a little money? That's an excellent question. And I know the, the predominant, you know, the traditional financial, personal financial advice is to pay off your debt before you start investing. But realistically, what I did that I feel kind of worked for me was, um, you know, always doing both at the same time because, um, you know, some of my investments really, when I was transitioning from, jobs and in the corporate world, what really saved me was um, really having a cushion of money there in my investments. Um, what they, what most experts kind of tell you is, you know, the, the money that you invest is going to go sort of, it won't cancel out if you have high interest rate. So, you know, kind of like that APR does tend to, if it's really high, it does tend to cancel out the interest that you're receiving from your um, savings accounts, which tend to be, now they're really, really low. So I would say, you know, maybe um, again, kind of 
um, do a little bit of both, you know, and kind of wet your feet or, you know, have some sort of investment somewhere, whether it's an LVES, whether it's on Ameritrade, um, somewhere like 401ks, anywhere that invests your money, have one of those accounts at least, but then actively um, focus, you know, maybe a little bit more of your money on paying off high interest rate uh, credit cards if the interest is high. Let's see. How old were you when you started taking control of your finances? Oh my goodness, it's been a journey. I always kind of tell the story of like when I started getting my, you know, financial financially the F together um, within, and actually that is exactly how Latina money started. So about two years ago, um, I really, I realized that I had made a ton of money mistakes. Um, you know, I've been working since I was 15 years old, but at that point I had, you know, nothing really to show for it because, you know, my problem was a spending problem. So I would spend it as fast as I would earn it. And which kept me in that, you know, that hamster wheel of just having to always work and always having to replenish my bank accounts because I was spending it and I didn't have any sort of structure there. Um, so that's really what led me to start um, learning about money and really um, getting those conversations out there. And I'm, you know, obviously we're all on this journey together. So it's an ongoing one. Money changes all the time. So um, you know, it's not just a one uh, set it and a forget it type of thing. It's really something that, you know, we have to find what makes it easier is finding a system that works for you from, you know, the get go, which is, you know, the three steps of looking where you're at, you know, where you've been, where you're at and where you're going. And I think once you kind of secure that process, you can just carry it over to whatever new products are coming up that will give you a better return for your money or just, um, you know, help you, those apps, there's always new apps that are helping you budget and, you know, kind of keep an eye on your money. So all those things are always changing, but the, make sure that you set up that frame, initial framework, so you always feel like you have some sort of sense of control over your financial life. Let's see. Andrea, it's, do we have time for more? I saw that it's five o'clock, but it's up to you. Yeah, we're trying, yeah, we still have some open. Um, what I'm doing is copying and pasting all of them, all of the mm -hmm. ones that we have remaining. So you yeah. can, um, I'll can, I can give them to you and we can send them via email later. Perfect. Does, does that work? Um, deal, yeah. Let's choose one more and we can wrap up. Does that work? Yeah, let me open my screen again. Let's see. Do you, Diana, do you make your own designs or do you hire graphic designers for Instagram? Um, yeah, I, I have my little creative brain working at all times. So it is something that I create myself. Let's see. Um, Emma, on step number two on writing everything down, is there a program template you recommend to keep track, put everything on paper, or just a simple doc? Honestly, when I first started, I put it just on a, you know, blank piece of paper. I pulled it out of my printer, those just blank white papers and started writing everything down. What I owed, how much I had available, how much I didn't have available, how much my monthly payment was, my due dates. Um, and started playing around with that because even with due dates, you know, that they are negotiable. So you could call your credit card companies and try to set everything up, you know, to land specifically to help you, um, whether you get paid by weekly or monthly. So you can kind of play around with those to make your it work for your financial situation. But the, you know, the, like I mentioned now, I have my stuff in the Dinero workbook because I like to write everything down and be able to go in my files and look at it. Um, also, you know, of course, we're, you know, it's a really marvelous time for technology. So there's always apps. I think mint.com is um, one that people really love. Um, that's an app for budgeting. You can also do that. Um, anything, anywhere that you could keep everything in one place that you could, again, look at that big picture is really going to help you out. Uh, Rosa, what is a good financial gift for a child that will teach them the growth of money as they get older? This one I really love because I myself have children and what I did was when they would receive birthday money from their families, um, what I did was open accounts, um, CDs and savings accounts 
uh, interest generating savings accounts um, at my local credit union. Um, recently, I transferred half of the money that they had in their savings into a CD, but the CDs are, um, which are the certificates of deposit, they have a time on them, uh, a time span. So say of your choosing, so it could be like six months, a year, um, I myself put them at five years because my kids are, are little, they're under seven, so they have plenty of time to generate in, um, you know, interest. I think the longer that you choose the time, the higher the interest rate will be on the money that's in there. So I, I highly, highly, highly suggest, you know, we're, we're constantly being given gift cards, you know, money for birthdays and everything, especially for kids. So if you're able to put some of that money into um, just setting, putting it away in an in interest generating account for them, I think that that's really helpful. For my credit union, it, they every time we make a deposit, they get to pick a toy. So it's, it's kind of, they love doing that. Let's see. Am I lost? Um, Antonia, what should Latinas be doing to close the wage gap? Um, three, I think three of the, my, my biggest tips were Again, the multiple streams of income, because even now it's, it's, you can't really keep all your eggs in one basket, regardless of how you know, great your job is. Be very thankful that you have you know, a fabulous job if you know, you're, you're there, but also cultivate a lot of other um, streams to make sure that you can protect yourself no matter what comes your way. Um, so the streams of income will up your pay for sure. Um, the negotiating, um, of course, it's always easier to negotiate um, wage before starting a job. Um, so that's always really important to keep in mind. If you are starting um, at a job, do your research on what it is um, that that uh, position traditionally pays. Um, when you're doing negotiation, always, you know, don't come up with an exact figure, kind of come up with a ballpark, keeping your own financials in mind. So say again, going back to, I need $2,500 to survive, but I need $5,000 to live my best life. Well, you know, keep that ballpark of 5,000 um, in mind when you do go to um, interview for a new job. And of course, always ask, you know, what does this, this position typically um, pay? And then kind of negotiate from there, keeping your own numbers in mind. Let's see. How do you, Ashley, how do you approach credit card and student loan debt? Do you suggest to prioritize one over the other? Well, um, yes, I highly prioritize um, credit cards because they, of course, do um, negative, they could have negatively impact your credit score if you don't keep up with them. Plus, the interest rate is much, much, much higher on a credit card than it is on a student loan. So, um, you know, I, the way I kind of think of student loans is those pesky things that are always kind of, well, not always, but you know, for, they're going to be there for a good portion. So pay attention to them. Do give what you comfortably can afford um, without jeopardizing your survival, but do um, prioritize credit cards, you know, uh, bringing down your credit card debt um, in terms of that. Because, you know, they're scored differently as well. So if a lender were to run your credit score, um, they would look um, more heavily at your um, debt to income ratio that comes from um, and how much like debt you have taken on from the credit cards versus student loans. Okay, I think I got the, the last one. So we can okay. send a follow up email um, with yeah. anything other, other resources that you would want to share. Sounds good. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. The screen to find to um, share the different resources we have. Um, so just wanted to thank everyone who came. Yes, uh, Latina Tech really is made for you. So thank you for the ideas on creating a panel on investing. Um, we'll definitely consider that with Janet. Um, this is Janet's email. Sorry, I'm just... <laughs> Jay didn't appear. <laughs> um, you can always keep supporting Latinas in Tech by donating yes. at latinasintech.org. Um, don't forget to register. You can create your own profile and we 
in on the page latinasintech.org and you can keep creating and we'll we'll keep adding uh different products so we, we're evaluating a mentorship program um you'll be able to find people within the network so please 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 get your profile in there um and if you want to follow us through social media this is where you can follow us on facebook groups um instagram twitter or our slack channel um, so just again, wanted to thank everyone for coming. Um, we're really having fun and enjoying creating these webinars on a weekly basis, even though we had so much to talk about and now we have time. Um, so hopefully you'll keep um, enjoying them. All right, thank you so much ladies for coming. Thank you, Janet, so, so much for your time thank and for so much. trying to respond to all of the questions. We, we made sure to give enough time for the Q&A. Thank you so much. Gracias, mujeres. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.